It's fantastic. I love it. There's so many interesting insights. And I really like the practical approach, you know, actually what's happening behind the scene. What can you actually practically use, not just theory, what the book said. We can read that on the internet. Very interesting uh, pre uh, presentations, uh, very interesting speakers, yes. Very good insights on MA. Uh, personally, I'm on FPNA side, so I think for me it was very interesting to do a deep dive on uh, MA and also from. Uh, very interesting people, very insightful. M&A, it's not something I come across uh, every day, so the presentation so far have been very insightful, definitely helpful for uh, any m and I'll be involved with in the future. I have a lot of helpful topics on the m definitely, that I think I will be using in the future for sure. And the quality is great, it's well organized, location is perfect. Well, I love it. Um, I love it. I work in finance and uh, it's a major interest to find out about all these insights. So, um, obviously I have some experience and uh, I love to, to get into this topic. Yes, yeah, I find it uh, very insightful, first of all. Great speakers. Uh, great attendance, so great crowds to, to meet and network with. And I found the content very relevant to what I'm doing. It's, it's very concise, very good detail, level of detail. And also I learned a lot, I must say. And the two presentations that we have seen so far are very complimentary and give a great picture of you know, what you do in, in M&A arena. Welcome back to the last presentation before our panel, and by saying presentation I mean the presentation of a case study, a case study exploring the truly complex complexities of today's M&A landscape. And for this rather challenging task, we do have, by sheer accident and good luck, just the right people. Thus, let me introduce the CEO of, he's, he's got one foot on stage already, he can't wait. The CEO of Aplico, a former investment banker and CFO of several multinational companies with more than 25 years of experience in the area of corporate finance. Uh, the CEO of Aplico is an expert you want to have at your side when it comes to the M&A business. Please do welcome with me, Daniele Tedesco. So we do need indeed the Chief Financial Officer, Latin America, Europe, Middle East and Africa of the LAP Group, the world's leading supplier of integrated solutions and branded products in the field of cable and connection technology. On stage and myself off stage, Lutz Grotebrunner from LAP Group. Welcome. Thank you. So my name is Daniele Tedesco and as my name says, it sounds German, but I'm not German. I'm actually Italian and I have a Swiss passport. My wife is Swiss, so you can imagine during Euro Cup and World Cups, my life is a disaster. We're going to be presenting today uh, a case study with uh, my dear friend Lutz. So let me just quickly go into what we are actually planning to do today. We're going to show you a, sh a case study on how FPNA solutions, so the solutions we do for financial planning and analysis, support M&A transactions effectively. All that you heard before from UBS, from uh, uh, Aid Advisory, and from Horvath, we're putting into action. So this is the reality check, where we actually get everything into a solution, and we need to get it on the road. We are a company that is focused on intelligent analytics and planning solutions. Uh, we were founded in 2013. Uh, we're a Swiss company, we're pretty proud of that. We are close to 100 uh, employees around the globe with uh, uh, five offices in Switzerland, Germany, India, Austria, and, and in Israel. We have a global business network uh, which allows us to deliver our solutions globally in different regions, uh, which is North America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. And many of our customers are mid-sized to large companies. To name a few, I'm really proud of, obviously, Amazon uses our solution globally for the whole financial planning and analysis process. We have customers such as ABB, Deutsche Bahn, Hitachi, UBS is also a very good client of ours, just to showcase how complex solutions can get. Nevertheless, our solutions are also used by mid-sized companies such as Lop Group. We focus primarily on two 
kind of uh, business solutions. On one hand, for the Office of Finance, uh, and on the other hand, for the Investment Office. I'm going to go into more details in the next slide what that means. But essentially, we are the ones that deliver solutions to what you heard before. Throughout my career, I learned that FPNA solutions support M&A transaction primarily on four areas. The first area is increasing transparency. You've heard it from Patrick Roth that there's an enormous amount of data and information that needs to be provided, that needs to be consistent, that needs to be bulletproof, and that needs to be uh, able to be provided to investors so that they actually trust the investment case you're providing. Our financial solutions support exactly that. You will be able to actually have a consistent financial planning and reporting data set that will be flowing into the fact books that companies such as Aid Advisory create. And that is an incredibly important part because unless that data is credible, you're not going to have a good investment story. The next one is to decrease uncertainty and risks. We've heard a lot about risk mitigating. Why do transactions fail or not? And one part is obviously the regulatory requirements. The regulatory requirements over the last couple of years have increased a lot, and you need to provide a myriad of reports that support that, and our solutions support that kind of like reporting requirements as well during the whole process. From a risk management perspective, it allows you to both assess the financial and operational risks that will be challenged by potential investors when you're going through an exit strategy. So our solution will allow you to better explain how you mitigate those risks and how you manage those risks. Next one is actually our solutions help to improve performance. How do we do that? On one hand, it allows you to assess where the synergy are when you're trying to acquire an asset. You will be able to create pro forma P&Ls, assess the different departments where, which are equal, where you would potentially see some cost savings. Uh, even from a networking capital perspective, you will be able to assess where you would see the potential to increase, uh, to achieve synergies. From a cash flow management perspective, that is primarily on the network capital, networking capital side, our solution allows you to model networking capital for all the different implications that are in the business, whether it's driven from currency fluctuations, sales and operations changes, or uh, even supply disruptions. You're able to, to uh, stress that in our solution. At the end, what you need to be able to provide is a full blown fact book that covers PL, balance sheet, and cash flow. And that cash flow needs to tie to all the, the assumptions you've made. And you need to be able to de defend those assumptions with potential buyers. If you actually are buying a target, our solution allows you to post-acquisition, do the integration planning, and execute the, the, the transaction in such a way so you can monetize on the investment. Last but not least, it's about increasing value. Increasing value specifically is when you actually need to tell a good story. And for those that work in banking, you know, selling a company is like selling another product. You need to have a good story. You need to be able to tell what the USPs are of that company. And if you can back that with data, you're going to, have a, or you're going to be in a much better position than if you're not. And our solutions support that journey. This, by on one hand, being able to provide you with the, the key information that feed into the SPA to be able to maximize on the, on the valuations. On the other hand, it also allows you to create business plans that are, can, be, can be communicated to the potential stakeholders with a, with a story that actually sticks. So that people understand what your business model is, why you are so unique, and how you generate value. So ultimately, these four buckets are what you're actually going, going to uh, use this technology such as FP&A solutions. But at the end, the steering model, that's where you need to have the ability to create scenarios. We've heard there's lots of uncertainty that actually impacts all of your businesses, whether it's currency, whether it's um, all sorts of crisis. You need to be able to stress test, stress test your operating model with those scenarios and understand the sensitivities. Our solution supports that so that you can actually assess how sensitive you are to certain impacts. And the performance management at the end, you heard it from Jana, it's super important. You need to have a steering model that you can represent in a solution that the business actually understands. Less is more. 
One of the key things that I always talk to, to my clients is define what is material. Stick to what is material, the rest is not important. To the question where how many KPIs do you need to have? There's just two axes there. One is how is the impact of the KPI to the business, and the other one is how can you influence it? If you cannot influence it, it has low impact, you should just ignore the KPI. On the one hand, other hand, if the KPI is, has a huge impact and you can influence, that's the one that you should focus on. But at the end, the most important deliverable is it actually allows you to increase transparency, decrease uncertainty and risks, improve performance and increase value. So without further ado, I would like to hand over to Lutz. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Daniela. <laughs> and uh, I've been in touch with Aplico and with the guys already for a while, also before I joined LAP. A couple of years ago, uh, I was working with uh, a star-shaped uh, car company from Stuttgart uh, throughout Asia. Then I was always thinking, hey, if we could get a fully integrated model, that would really be cool because that would save us a ton to model ourselves, everything. So we're always in touch. And then when the guys asked me a couple of weeks ago, if I could present the case study here and do a little bit of marketing for them, I'm not paid actually today, actually. Yeah. Uh, I'm here voluntarily and uh, it's actually a true story. I thought, okay, but M&A, now I'm with a private equity. We had some private equity guys here. Our company is privately held. I know all of them. Yeah? So it's a very, very private equity entity, but then we're not entirely active in the M&A market although I've seen today that we should probably be investing and divesting more. I was wondering why an M&A topic. Huh? I said, okay, yeah, we've been using this initially for the FP&A side. And then when I went through and, and uh, thought about it, I said, yeah, it makes sense because we've heard it a couple of times today, transparency, 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 KPIs, uh, how do you steer, how do you understand your business, what are the value drivers? I thought, okay, this is exactly what we were discussing. Maybe not primarily because we wanted to do a ton of M&A transactions. And then we went, when we went through and said, okay, what uh, could I present? We said, okay, there's a ton of things which we actually, also in the realm of M&A, use the tool for. Yeah. And jump to two concluding slides, pretty much. Um, and uh, bringing it back to what also Daniele presented. What are the challenges and the topics regarding M&A? And we said increased transparency, and I think I've heard transparency in all presentations pretty much. Um, and what goes very well for the internal steering, of course, also goes very well uh, into analyzing a potential target, or if we were up to sale, which we're not. Well, <laughs> never. That's what I heard. Yeah. Uh, the fourth generation is already alive, uh, and I know them. <laughs> like um, so, but on, this, on, the, on the buy side, of course, it's easier if you have the transparency by yourself. And again, we buy stuff that we know. So it's not a company that's completely outside of a business line, but be close. But then, of course, we can apply the logic that we have internally also to this one, and that helps. Um, um, and we... Heard about multiples a couple of times. Um, I like to do discounted cash flow as much as possible. It's not always the easiest to transport, uh, but with a solid model and with a solid driver-based forecasting model behind it, which doesn't have to be rocket science to the last digit, you can also do a very solid DCF calculation and budget and forecast your working capital sound and safe uh, and not overstate or uh, understated, and that is a big, big chunk which the solution brings, uh, not only for internal steering, but also for M&A transactions. Second, what we discussed is communication. I think that's, that's obvious, right? So if you have everything ready, um, you can present this in a more professional way. Daniela mentioned there's also UX, so also front end that, that does the trick very, very neatly and very, very, very nice. Um, and of course, if we were selling, I would be very, very happy to have a fantastic pitch deck of everything ready. But then again, I would never get that chance in this company. Um, gives me some ideas maybe for the next. Um, and in general, the communication aspect is key. So that helps really quite a lot. Due diligence is the same thing. And we've been using this also for uh, target evaluation, because if we have a model, we can 
even if the numbers are faxed to us, we can get them into the model and uh, try to do an analysis based on this because it's a pre-built model and it's a holistic model. So we don't have to build up something in Excel and try to get it together and say, oh shit, did I forget something? Um, no, that works quite nice. And that helps in the due diligence and also in an assessment of a sales price of where we stand. Not so much to, uh, uh, to analyze financial risks and the likes, but also here you see if things are out of line compared to what you expect and what you experience in your daily business. So that is a big help here. Uh, performance. Um, for us, it's basically I'll start from the back pretty much. <laughs> um, because a big advantage from our side is also integration planning and exec oops, no, go back. So, um, detailed integration uh, and forecasting. So the big advantage is I don't have to get a ton of IT guys to integrate a new entity into what we have. It will not be the full blown thing, including all customer segments and all products in detail and everything. But into that model, it's fairly easy to integrate an entity um, and then also start to in include it into your performance tracking. Uh, not like with an entity that you've been having in the group for 20 years, but uh, the integration is seamless compared to uh, a lot of other tools that I've seen. Uh, and to bring in a standard SAP, implement this, and then have it uh, part of a standard tool chain, and then integrate, and then you can automatically consolidate, you have everything, normally it takes longer than two weeks. Uh, and uh, with this one, that's really helpful also in the integration, so whenever we get a new entity, it's fairly easy to bring them into our management reporting, uh, and bring them into also our steer steering logic. Um, and the other th topics was performance management, uh, improved performance. Again, with transparency, it's easier to do. Uh, and also in the transaction, it helped us a lot. And we've been also using this to track. Uh, so the business case we've received originally before the transaction is something that we throw in. And then we can track against this one. That is something not everybody likes all the time. Um, but I like that. Um, and this is, in a nutshell, to bring it back to also why I personally think, number one, it's a great tool. Number two, it's not a massive effort to implement. Um, and number three, besides the internal FP&A topics, it also helps in M&A topics. Yeah? Um, and with that one, Daniele, you come back. You have to answer the questions now. <laughs> <laughs> so, <thanks. laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>